Hi, everybody. How are we doing today? Today, we're going to learn how to do some financial statements. Thinking of do thinking about doing an income statement, a statement of owner's equity, and a balance sheet. So we'll be working in a non-corporation setting. So hopefully that will uh, that will be beneficial. So I'm going to bring up my screen here. All righty. So I have some data here over to the left. And you can see that the company name is the Lands of Fame Company. And we have a bunch of accounts from cash all the way down to depreciation expense. And then there's an also, also a little other tidbit there. The owner invested an additional 2300 during the year. So we have to do an income statement, a statement of owner's equity, and a balance sheet. So in case you ever have something like this in an assignment, here's how you can handle it. So first thing we need to do is put in the heading. So above the income statement, we're going to put the name of the company, Lands of Fame, and we'll just put company there. And let me just add that to all of the other statements here while I'm here. Okay. When you're doing an income statement and a statement of owner's equity, we want the long date. So let's assume this is a uh, calendar year. So we're going to write for the year ended December 31st, and then we'll just go generic 20XX, okay? The income statement and the statement of owner's equity get this long date. Uh, these two documents are basically painting a story, telling a story, painting a picture of what happened during that time frame. Whereas the balance sheet isn't doing that at all. The balance sheet is just saying, tell me your balances on the last day of the period. Okay. So there's a, it's very important that you do the proper dating in these financial statements. Okay. So let's get into the actual documents and statements. So the first thing we want to do is to do an income statement. Remember the goal of the income statement is to determine profitability. That's what we're trying to do. And when doing an income statement, what helps you determine profitability are revenues and expenses. So let me turn my income statement yellow. And let's go grab all the things that would fall into this yellow document. And basically, I'm going to grab all the revenues and expenses. Right? Now, when I say all the revenues, the revenues I'm referencing are the earned revenues. Anything that is called unearned revenue is a liability. So that does not go here. So let's do this financial statement. We're going to start off with the heading revenue, followed by a colon symbol. That colon symbol says, Prepare an indented list of any of your earned revenues. Well, we happen to have two of them. We've got consulting revenue. And we've got service revenue. Because I have more than one, I will enter them in column one. So 35-1 and 24-6. I'm going to add these two numbers together. And I'm going to call this total, total revenue. And I'm going to put that total in column two. If I only had one revenue, I would have gone all the way to the right from the beginning, and I would not have needed to write total revenue. Let's clean this up a little bit so it looks really formal. Okay, so we've got our revenues taken care of. Next thing we want to do is record our expenses. So I'm going to put the heading expenses in here, followed by the colon symbol. And again, get prepared to indent a list of expenses. Got salaries expense, rent expense, selling and administrative expense, And we got depreciation expense. And I'm going to put them in column one. Why? Because I have more than one. This is not debits and credits. Um, the majority of the population that 
looks at financial statements, doesn't understand a debit from a credit. So this is just column one for itemizing, column two for grand totals. So we now need to total these up. I like plural. And let's add them up. So when I go to add them up, I get 44.4. And let's do the subtraction. So 59.7, subtract out that 44.4, and we end up with 15.3. Anybody know what that 15.3 represents? Hopefully, you, low, you know your accounting by this point, and you know that that 15.3 equals net income. So in case you're a little wishy-washy on your accounting and what the financial statements do, remember when your revenues are greater than your expenses. When the revenues are greater than the expenses, you have a net income. So revenue 59.7, expenses 44.4, 15.3 represents a net income. How do you ever see a net loss? Well, a net loss is when the revenue is less than the expense. So if this 59.7 was less than 44.4, we would have had a net loss. Okay, so that's an income statement. Remember, the goal is profitability. Income statement is also known as a profit and loss statement, a P&L. All of those are the same thing for the same item. Okay, let's now do the statement of owner's equity. And in the statement of owner's equity, we have basically the objective in this document is to get your ending capital, your net worth, okay? So uh, do I wanna use this color? Let's use green instead. So the information that will impact our statement of owner's equity would be things like capital and drawing. We also, if we have any additional investment, that will also go in here. And then we need one other item, and that is the result of the income statement. So there's a reason why I started with the income statement. That is because the answer from the income statement will get copied into this statement of owner's equity. So let's go ahead and see how this is going to fold out here. So we're going to start off with lands capital. And this is on January 1st. And I'm gonna put that number right in column two. I have seen this put in column one as well, not a big deal. Uh, just depends on the format that you're used to. Now we're gonna add in some additional investments, which is not a common occurrence. So in this case, that additional investment is $2,300. And then we also have our net income from the income statement we just completed. And that was 15.3. So we now, let me put that in yellow so you remember where I got it from. Came from the yellow document. We'll now add these two numbers together. So 2,300 plus the 15.3, that gives us 17.6. I now want to add that to the 17.3. And this is going to give me a subtotal of 34.9. I still got one more step to do in the statement of owner's equity, and that's to subtract out the drawing. So we're going to subtract out land's drawing. And the amount of the draw is 14.3. Let's do that subtraction. 34.9, subtract out the 14.3, and we end up with 20,600 as our final balance in capital. This is our net worth. So land capital on December 31st of the current year. So that's your statement of owner's equity. Let me clean it up with the double lines at the bottom. Remember, double lines indicate conclusion, that you're done. So the income statement is done. 
and the statement of owner's equity is done. So now what we wanna do is the balance sheet. So let's go look at the balance sheet. And again, we've already completed the heading and let's do this balance sheet in, how about blue? Okay, so what do we have left? Well, we have cash, accounts receivable, supplies, equipment, accumulated depreciation. Those are all assets. We've got accounts payable and we've got unearned service revenue. So those are our liabilities. And then don't forget the answer from this document that we just completed, the statement of owner's equity. That's what's going to get copied into the balance sheet. If you copy the original capital, your balance sheet will not balance. So let's go ahead and do the balance sheet. We're going to start off with assets. And by the way, we are doing a classified balance sheet. So it's more detail. So the first detail is we're going to take our assets and split them into two subgroups, current assets and long-term assets. A current asset is an asset you expect to turn into cash or get rid of within one year or less. That's a current asset. So I'm looking at supplies. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's go in order here. Looking at cash. We have accounts receivable and supplies. And by the way, it would have been wrong for me to start with supplies because your assets need to be listed according to their liquidity. What's the definition of liquidity? How fast can you turn something into cash? So since cash is already cash, it goes first. So let me just copy these amounts in here. Cash is 10.8, accounts receivable is 10.3, and supplies 7,300. I now wanna add these three numbers together and I'm gonna put the answer in column two. Notice in most financial statements, we're putting the answer in the column afterwards. I did it with my revenues, did it with my expenses, right? I'm gonna call this 28.4 total current assets. Still not done, still got some work to do, but we're making our way towards the end of this balance sheet. Next thing, we want long-term assets. So just like current assets are assets that you plan on getting rid of within one year or less time, long-term assets, they're going to last you more than a year. So like equipment, buildings, um, furniture, vehicles, anything that gets depreciated falls under this category. And one other thing, land. All right, you'll see land in this category too, but land is the only item that does not get depreciated. So in our list, we have equipment and accumulated depreciation. Remember accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. So in other words, it's equipment sidekick, but it acts to bring down the value of that equipment so that that date that you see at the top of the balance sheet indicates the accurate value as of this date. So when we first bought the equipment, the equipment went on the books at $6,300. However, since then, it's gone down in value by 500. So we have to show the exact value as of this day. Now, when I say exact, I really mean an estimated value, but we have to put some type of book value for this asset. And if you've ever heard of the Kelly Blue Book, um, that's just a company named Kelly that helps figure out the values of vehicles. Well, book value is simply by definition, original cost minus accumulated depreciation. So we'll do this subtraction and 
or I should say we did the subtraction, 63 minus 500. So the current value of that equipment is 5,800. Let's now add that 5,800 to the 28.4. And that's going to give us 34.2 for our total assets. And we're going to double underline that because remember when you're in a balance sheet, the goal is do my assets equal my liabilities plus my owner's equity. So we're hoping to see that 34.2 one more time before we're all said and done, okay? So let's label this total assets. And half the balance sheet is done. All right, let's move on to the bottom half. We start off the bottom half with the heading liabilities. And just like we had current and long-term assets, we have current and long-term liabilities. So let's put in current liabilities. And the current liability that we have, actually we have two of them. We've got accounts payable and we've got unearned service revenue. Remember, unearned revenue is a liability, not a revenue account. So let's put these in here, 10.6 and 3,000. So our total liabilities, total current liabilities is 13.6. Doesn't look like we have any long-term liabilities, but an example of a long-term liability would be like a two-year note, um, a mortgage, 30-year mortgage, you know, things like that. You'll always know when something is long-term just based on the way it's written. So our liabilities are all current. Okay. And we go to our final category, owner's equity. And here we're gonna copy our answer from the statement of owner's equity. And there was that green document that we did over at the bottom left there. So we're gonna put in the owner's name, land, capital. I don't have to put in the date because this balance sheet, everything is on that date. It's already December 31st. So I'll put in the amount. Uh, what was that final answer? 20,600. And moment of truth here. We are hoping that when we add that 20,600 to the 13,6, that it equals what we got up top and we got we got it to work. 34.2, very happy when that happens. Uh, let me double underline it and then let me give it one final labeling. We'll call this total liabilities and owner's equity. And now you've seen the three financial statements. I hope this was helpful and look forward to creating a new video for you. If uh, you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, text me in here, leave a little note. Let me put one more little addition down here. Okay, now it's good. All right, leave me a little note of anything that you want me to cover. I'll be happy to do that. All right, Dr. Sam here again, and I uh, wish you guys the best. Hope, hope uh, I'm helping you in your classes. Take it easy. Bye-bye.